Hi everyone, it's Carla with Carla K Art, um, specializing in hand painted silk. And today's um, video is about how I go about transferring an image that I've drawn on paper onto the silk so I know where to put the resist lines. Um, this is, I'm sure, not the only way to do this. This is just a method that I've used forever and ever and it's worked really well for me. So I really hope you enjoy this video. everyone um it's carla um with carla k art welcome to my youtube channel um this channel is all about um the artwork that i do and i specialize in hand painted silk um today i'm going to be doing i'm transferring a drawing from a piece of paper a piece of draft paper where I, I drew a picture onto a piece of silk and a lot of people ask me how i get this done in some cases I just um, stretch the silk and I just paint directly on the silk. But when I'm doing a specific design for a client who's asked for um, a specific thing, or if I have found myself drawing and I do a, a great image on paper and I want to put it on the silk, then I need to find a way to transfer it to the silk. And the way I do this is with a light board. Um, this is, I would prefer to have a larger light board, but this is what I have, so this is what I use. Um, and then I have the drawing, which in this case has just been done on newsprint. Um, and then um, the drawing is in pencil. And then I've got a piece of silk charmeuse. This is a bandana. It's pre it, it comes pre-hemmed um, and has a rolled hem on it. It's very nice. Um, it's 19 mummy silk charmeuse. 19 mummy refers to the weight of the silk. It's a fairly thick silk. And because of that, it has a lot of fiber. So it's going to hold the dye colors really well. Um, 19 Mummy Charmeuse is one of my favorite silks to work on just because the colors come out so vibrant on it when you, when you paint with the silk dye. So I'm going to show you how I transfer the design. Now, if I'm doing something for a client and it's like a specific face, um, I'm going to tape this whole work area down. But in this case, um, so I can transfer the lines exactly the way they are. But in this particular case, it's a drawing I've done. In this case, I've done a drawing of a lion. And I just really like the way it came out. And I want to put it on the silk. But I'm not going to tape stuff down, per se, because I'm OK with editing the lines as I go here. Um, and I'm going to be drawing on here. You can draw on the silk. Um, of course, you can use pen and stuff like that. But that may not come out when you um, do the silk painting process. Um, you can use invisible ink. Um, like um, sewing and tailors um, use, um, which is um, often a blue ink that you can um, write on the silk and disappears when it comes into contact with water. Um, or in my case, I'm going to use a really soft pencil. This is a 6B Derwent graphic pencil. And no, I'm not sponsored by Derwent. I'm just being very transparent about what I use. Um, this um, pencil is really soft, so I don't have to press very hard. And thus far, when I've been washing out my silk, this pencil, these pencil lines made with these, this soft pencil has come out every time. Um, certainly, if you're gonna try this at home, um, do a sample of it, do a sample washing, and make sure that it works for you. Um, but thus far, it's come out every time I've washed out the silk. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed and, and do this drawing. And um, again, this is a bandana piece that I'm doing. And oftentimes these pieces, um, these bandana type pieces that I do end up getting framed. So I'm really looking at, um, instead of worn, they get framed. And so instead of um, some of the, the things that I do when I'm, wear, when I'm gonna wear, the design processes I go through when someone's gonna wear one of my pieces of artwork versus hang, I wanna make sure that the line is really in the center because if they hang this up, I want them to see it in the center. So you can do that by you know, measuring from the nose or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it here. And I think this is pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and just transfer the design. I don't know how well you can see it on the screen um, as I'm looking at this, as I'm looking at the monitor. Um, it's coming through pretty well. But um, if you can't see it through the screen for whatever reason, if there's a glare, um, the picture is really quite clear, and I didn't even draw that darkly um, for the lion. Here, I'll turn this off for a second so you can see. I didn't draw the lion particularly darkly, 
But if you are having problems seeing through the thickness of the silk, you can of course trace the lion or your image with a, a marker, um, a Sharpie or something like that, and that will make it show up better. Okay, so I've got this pretty much in. And then what I do is I just go in and I hold the silk. Now, if you push down and just go to the right, you're gonna actually end up pulling the silk because it has a little bit of a stretch to it, a little bit of a stretch, not much, but enough that when you're drawing, it can get really awkward. So you do have to kind of sketch it and you kind of have to go light and you have to work from both directions at once because you can see how the silk kind of starts to tilt up. When I'm drawing and when I'm giving um, lessons in drawing, I always kind of discourage sketching. I prefer people just to draw a line. But in the case of transferring the silk, the image to the silk, you have to sketch or your, your um, drawing is gonna get all distorted. So I'm going through and I'm doing the eye. The eyes are the windows to the soul, everyone says. So you wanna be really careful about where you put that eye and how you draw it. The slightest change in an eye can make it go from being a sad eye, a friendly eye, excited eye, or a mad eye. So you really want to kind of pay attention to what you got going on there. And again, because this is my drawing and I'm drawing it on my piece of silk, I'm editing as I feel is necessary. Here's the other eye. And by doing the eyes first, as I work around the piece, I can use this as a reference point because I haven't taped things to make sure I'm, I'm still in the right spot and the silk hasn't moved too much. And you can see because the pencil is so soft, it just comes off very easily on the silk, so I really don't have to push that hard at all. And that's the goal. I just wanna be able to see the lion. I don't want to have a drawing on my silk. I want this, all these pencil lines to disappear in the end. So I only draw as dark as I, as I need to. If I were to press really hard with this, this pencil, I'm sure I could make lines in the silk that would not wash out. So you have to use care. Now, if you are watching me and you are not familiar with hand painting silk, when you paint silk, you um, draw with the resist. And the resist works like a fence to contain the dye. So I end up drawing a lot of um, spaces. Instead of shading, I draw a space where the shading would occur. So you're going to see me drawing a lot of organic um, circular shapes because if I leave any gaps, then the dye can escape through those gaps. So I'm essentially drawing lines wherever I'm going to put the resist. Oh my god, his whisker hold. Now, because I'm going to be using a lot of pre-colored black resist on this piece, I'm not too worried about where I put the holes. If I know, or the, the lines, if I know I'm going to cover an area with some clear resist and I don't want the pencil to show through, because if I draw over any of these lines with clear resist, I'll make the pencil lines permanent. Um, if I'm going to be doing that, I can either draw above where I want the white line to be or a circle around where I want to do a drop of clear. Um, but I can't draw in the same place that I want the clear to go. So make sure if you have clear lines that you want in your piece that you are remembering that so that you don't put a pencil line where you want that clear line to be. it interesting, this is just my little anecdote, if you will, that every feline, um, every cat or, or a lion or cougar or whatever that you draw, that the shape inside their nose is actually that of a, a bull, like a bronc. Okay, so I've got his chin drawn. So now I can slide this whole thing around a little bit, making sure that I slide both pieces, not just the paper and not just the silk. 
The softer the lead, the lighter you have to push. And the B refers to the softness. If it was an H, it would be referring to how hard the pencil is. But the B refers to how soft it is. So now I'll turn this off. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see it here. And um, again, I'm pretty loose on this particular piece. I didn't tape anything down, but certainly you can tape stuff down. And if you're afraid of putting tape on the silk, you can actually use silk pins, which are a really, really sharp pin. They're used for um, people when they're sewing silk. Um, you can use those um, sharp pins to pen it to the paper after you've um, taped the paper to the table. And you can use that. Um, I have pretty good luck just using it openly. I don't like to tape the silk because when you tape, put tape on the silk, if you leave it there for any length of time or if it's worn out, there's a residue that collects on the silk. And um, I don't want that residue on my silk pieces. I don't want to have to worry about washing that out. So the, the less I can do to the silk, the happier I am. But I, am, I do often, if I'm doing a commission and I want the piece to look exactly as the customer has approved it, um, has approved the drawing, I will tape the paper down and then put the silk on top of it and work from there. Here, I have a drawing on the silk that I can now stick the silk on the stretcher frame and I can go over these lines with resist and start painting this piece. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Um, if you like the video, please press the word like below. Um, and if you want to get more videos like this from me, please press the subscribe button below. Um, if you press the arrow button below, you will see all kinds of information about um, me and my business and um, including links to my Etsy site where I sell originals, links to my Fine Art America site where I sell prints, um, and links to my um, personal website where you can see a gallery of a lot of my different images that I've done. Um, really hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now!